without fail, no matter how many times I answer questions about this, no matter how many videos I make about this, the same question keeps popping up over and over and over again. And that question is, Hello, how are you? I hope you're well. I've got a quick one for you today. Today we're talking once again about getting smooth playback in DaVinci Resolve. If you watched my first two videos on this and you followed all the tips and it's still not working, I've got three more tips for you. Three different scenarios to look at, three different ways to get past those scenarios. By the end of this video, you should know a couple new tools and you know, well, everybody will be having a good day. Let's take a look at scenario number one. Let's say you've got a video file here. Maybe it's, you know, a 12 bit 6K Blackmagic RAW. Maybe it's that 10 bit H265 from the A7S3. Who knows? Whatever it is. Let's say you got a piece of footage, you bring it into your timeline, and for whatever reason, it is not playing back smoothly. You're getting like 15, 16. Maybe you're lucked out and get 19 frames per second. Either way, it's laggy, it's stuttering, it's just annoying. We want smooth playback. That's why we're watching this video. That scenario is actually a pretty easy fix. All you got to do is come up to your top menu, go to playback, come down to render cache and turn on smart render cache. And you'll see we've got this red bar here. It's going to start turning blue. Basically what just happened was DaVinci Resolve read all of the clips in the timeline. They determined the processing power that would be needed in order to play back that clip smoothly and if it went over a certain threshold it it just rendered out the cache and now as soon as this whole bar is blue we're gonna get nice smooth playback now let's take a look at scenario two before we do that we need to go ahead and turn our smart render off because this will actually screw up what i'm trying to show you so we're going to turn that off here let's go into the color page with our second clip so we're going to come down here and we're going to do a couple things here first thing we're going to do is just add a couple nodes here let's go ahead and just go crazy with the noise reduction for a second we go five better and just just crank that a little bit and i mean if i play this back i'm actually getting 24 frames per second so that didn't do anything let's add another node here we're going to add some contrast like so we're going to bring down our saturation that's fine there and then in this third node we're going to go ahead and add some motion blur so we'll grab that and now if we play this back yeah, 13, 14, 15, 16, 15. It's stuttering. You can see it. it looks absolutely horrible. Now there's a couple different ways we can fix this. First thing we could do, we can go back to edit and we can come over here and right click and we can go render cache color output and then come back up to playback and we'll do render cache user. And you'll see that will start rendering out this clip. We've got that red bar, it's turning blue. And just like with Smart Cache, all we gotta do, we play back here. And again, we got 24 frames per second. We're playing back, we've got our noise reduction, we've got our motion blur, we've got our little color correction, everything's playing back fine. Here's the problem. Let's go back to the color page. Let's go ahead and add a new node and this time we're well, let's do something crazy we're gonna go ahead and just i don't know push up those midtones. we're not trying to make this look pretty we're just trying to make a point let's go back to the edit page and see what happened boom that line is red again it's got to render the whole clip over again we don't want to have to go through that every time we tweak something in a node because trust me if you're doing color correction on a big enough project you will go you will go back I promise you, you're gonna have to go back and you're gonna have to tweak something and then you're gonna have to wait for that clip to render and it's gonna be super annoying. We don't want that. Let me show you the workaround. Let's go ahead and right click here and we're gonna turn off render cache color output. That bar is gonna disappear. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come back into the color page and we're gonna come to this motion blur effect here and we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna go node cache and we're just gonna turn that to on 
and you'll see that these numbers turned red where it has the number of the node and it's it's rendering if we come back to the edit page you'll see we've got that red bar and and it's it's just it's rendering that one node and i'll show you why that's important because first of all that node is the node that was causing the problems that's the node that started causing the laggy playback so now if we go ahead and play that once again we're getting 24 frames per second and here is why caching the node is is much much better than doing all of the color cache if we go back into the color page let's go ahead and let's let's bring this down in the opposite direction let's just make any kind of change here if we come back to the edit page that line is still blue because it doesn't need to render it it already rendered the effect it rendered the thing that was causing the laggy playback so if you are adding effects in the color page and you're having an issue then all you got to do is render that one node that has the effect in it and then you can do whatever you want to the other nodes and you will already have that one effect rendered and you won't have to worry about having to re-render every time you make a change. It's super convenient. I, I love doing this. I do this all the time because I use that new halation effect all the time now. It's amazing. If you have DaVinci Resolve Studio and you haven't played around with that plugin yet, that effect yet, I highly recommend it. All right, last clip, another time lapse. Yay! Let's go ahead and add something here. We're gonna we're gonna add this. Let's go ahead to effects, motion VFX, M channel clean. Let's go ahead and maybe add a background here. Not that one. That one looks interesting. Let's, is it this one? Yeah, let's go ahead and add this one. Turns it black and white, kind of splits it. I like that, that looks weird. Okay, let's go ahead and grab this, boom. And it's on here, but if we play this back, we are stuttering along. That is, that is horrible. And th this same thing can happen if you've got like a fusion composition on this clip or something like that, it, it can happen. It can happen really easily. So we're stuttering along. Now, I'm not gonna make any changes to this clip. I'm just gonna use this as a background and I already know it's the right length and all of that good stuff. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna right click here. And I'm gonna come up to render in place. And now we can choose what format we wanna render in. I typically do QuickTime. DNHR 44410 bit and I hit render and then we're just gonna find the folder where we want this laggy playback in DaVinci Resolve select folder and we're gonna render in place now that clip's got a couple more minutes to render so let me just say while we wait there's a couple things that you're gonna need in order to really take advantage of all these rendering tools in DaVinci Resolve. One of them is storage. You definitely need storage because you're creating files, you're creating cache, and you need a place to put all that stuff. The other thing you're gonna need is a decent computer because otherwise you're gonna be sitting around for hours waiting for things to render and nobody's got time for that. So if your machine isn't quite up to par, I highly suggest checking out today's sponsor, Puget Systems, because those guys really know how to build a PC. I mean, they build them for video editors and gamers and engineers, you, you name it. And they actually built my PC about a year ago. And the thing is absolutely phenomenal. They hopped on a call with me. They asked me questions about my workflow, the types of projects I work on, the types of projects I want to work on in the future. And then they got to work designing a system that was tailor-made for me. It was awesome. So if you're in the market for a PC that does exactly what you want when you want it, Click that link in the description. Check out Puget Systems today. Those guys are super cool, super knowledgeable, and they will 100% get you started on the right foot. Thank you so much, Puget Systems, for sponsoring this video. And it looks like our render cache is done. So we did our render in place, and basically what happened was DaVinci Resolve rendered out a file. It put a new file in our folder. It imported it into DaVinci Resolve. See if we come up here. 
One of these here is actually our DNHR file, which is super, super cool. And then it placed it into our timeline exactly where our old clip was. And if we play that back, we're getting smooth playback at 24 frames per second. Done. Now, let's say that for whatever reason, I needed to go back in and tweak that effect, or maybe I wanted to do some color grading or something on this clip. All I'd have to do is right click and go to decompose to original and boom, I'm back to my original. I can go into my effect. I can tweak my frames. Look at that, boom. Can do that. We can maybe bring up the saturation. Maybe we we'll want this to be super colored. Now nah, we're gonna go black and white. Definitely go black and white for this. And let's just go ahead and reset. And then when you're all said and done, you just right click, render in place. It should save all your settings. Let's go ahead and render, choose our folder and boom, it's rendering. All right, I hope at least one of those tips helped you out. If it did, then make sure you leave me a comment and let me know, maybe hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the things and go watch this video right here because I would love you forever if you did that. Thanks for watching.